Welcome to a brand new series on this channel called Investing Truth Tellers. My goal, as you know, in this channel is to bring you real investing advice and as such, I decided to do a series where I share with you what I consider the truth tellers in the investing community. In today's very first episode of the series, I bring to you Professor Kenneth French. In the video I'm about to show you, he explains why lower economic growth may not hinder future stock returns and whether investors should fear the new normal. Let's dive right in. All right, for those of you that are not familiar with Professor Kenneth French, he is a distinguished professor of finance at the School of Business at Dartmouth. He is an expert on the behavior of security prices and investment strategies. He and Professor Eugene Fama are well known for their research work. They've published many papers and academic articles such as the cross-section of expected stock returns and uh, common risk factors in the returns of stocks and bonds. But before joining Dartmouth, Professor French was on the faculty of MIT School of Management, uh, the Yale School of Management and University of Chicago. So he's truly one of the most respected people in the investing community. So in today's episode, I'm going to show you an interview with Professor Ken French in which he talks about how history shows us that average returns tend to be higher during periods of economic difficulty. And while this interview was done in the context of the 2008 financial crisis, it is amazing that the things he says are absolutely true and applicable to what we're experiencing today when we have the global illness affecting the stock market. Ironically, back then, the interview was titled, Should Investors Fear the New Normal? And we also refer to the widespread illness now that is causing the new normal. Let me play you this short clip and provide some additional commentary. Hi, I'm Brad Steinman from Dimensional Fund Advisors, and joining me today is Ken French, the Height Professor of Finance at Dartmouth College and a director at Dimensional. Ken, uh, in the wake of the financial crisis, some investors are concerned about the so-called new normal economy, which they characterize as a period of below average GDP growth. If we are indeed going to be in a period of below average GDP growth, should we expect lower returns on equities as a result? The short answer is probably not. If you look back through time, what we see in the data is during periods of economic difficulty, recessions, even in, in depressions, going forward from a, any point at which you say, okay, we're really in a depression now, or we're really in a recession now, average returns tend to be high during those periods. Naturally, the average return is low in a period where you discover you're, you're in bad times. But once I know, okay, we have bad times, average returns tend to be higher. So what we're experiencing now in 2020, we're having a below average GDP growth. We have a severe market drop, most sharply it was in March, and the economy is obviously in bad shape. But what Professor Ken French is suggesting is that we should not stop investing during the bad times because the average expected return is higher than people anticipate. At least that's what we learn from history. And as Mark Twain says, history doesn't repeat itself, it rhymes. I think this is exactly what is happening now. Let's go back to the video. And the easy way to think about this is nobody's surprised right now when they get up in the morning and they say, yeah, we're in bad times. That information is already in the price. Okay, so if I'm an investor thinking about, okay, is do I expect high returns now? Do I expect low returns? The fact that we have bad news out there in the marketplace, that's already in the price. This is a really important point and I want to stress that. The fact that there is bad news in the market, it is already in the price. Remember, the market is priced as what is anticipated to happen in the future, not what is now. The now is already priced in. As such, most investors should realize that the volatility we see is associated with what could happen in the near future. That's why you see these daily market fluctuations when, 
For example, the Fed is about to announce what they're going to do or there are any political scandals and the market always tries to price in good or bad news before it actually happens. And now I say, okay, what is it that's driving expected returns? Probably in periods where everything's going great, people want to save for a rainy day. Well, I don't need to promise them that high an expected return to induce them to save. On the other hand, in recessions, things are really bad, people are laid off. This is when people want to be spending out of their savings, out of the stuff they put away for their rainy day. This is the rainy day. So in order to induce them to actually leave the money in the stock market, in order to induce them to defer that consumption, we have to promise them a higher expected return. And then there's a second effect that goes on as well. During this period of recession, there's a lot more uncertainty about what's going to happen in the future. Probably that uncertainty is going to push up the risk premium in the market as well. So in good times when people are saying volatility is low, I'm, I have less to fear, you don't have to pay me as much in terms of a risk premium. Now I'm saying probably because the empirical evidence here isn't overwhelming. The point estimates actually say, yeah, this is what's going on, but we don't get a big T statistic. But logically it makes sense and the data seem to support the conclusion that it's during bad times, exactly what you've called the new normal. I'm not sure it's going to be normal forever, but certainly during this recession that we're going through, during a bad time like this, probably we should expect a higher expected return rather than a lower expected return. It's As Professor Kenneth French highlights here, we should probably expect higher return rather than lower return. And although not mentioned, he means in the long run. This is why I believe if you dollar cost average into or during a recession, you will still come out ahead and most probably be much better than if you stayed on the sidelines. By the way, if you're not familiar with dollar cost averaging, I made a video about it and I will link to it in the info card up above as well as in the description of this video. Not GDP growth, it's the prices relative to future earnings that are going to drive the expected return. So then what's the implication for investors who think they ought to tilt their portfolio to countries with high GDP growth in pursuit of high expected returns? Well, I, you know about the value effect. Value effect that says companies whose book value is high relative to their stock price or companies whose earnings high relative to their stock price. There seems to be, first there's a value effect around the world when we look at individual stocks, but there's also a similar value effect when we look at countries. So there's a nice paper by uh, Cliff Asnes, John Liu, and Ross Stevens. And what they do is they look at the returns to countries when you sort by ratios like the aggregate earnings to price or the aggregate book value to price. What they find is the same value effect there. High earnings price, high expected return. Low earnings price, low expected return. And it turns out that's also a powerful way to sort on expected growth. That's why we call the companies with low earnings price, low book to market, growth companies. Well, the same thing happens at the country level. The countries that are anticipating high growth, it turns out they're also anticipating or should be anticipating lower expected return. So a, an investor who's saying, I want to go to the country that has high expected growth, that's a perfectly sensible strategy, but it's not a strategy that would be maximizing their expected return. All right, thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something new today on investing. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to destroy the like button and as usual, if I missed anything, drop it down in the comment section below. And if you're new here, please subscribe for more videos and real investing advice. Check out some of my other videos from my investing playlist where I talk about the most important topics and teach you what to do. So until next time, stay the course and keep investing on a regular basis.